Hey everybody, Ryan Alexander here with Denison Yachting. Today I'm here with broker and my friend Scott LaCroix. We're going to be showing you around one of his newest listings, which just so happens to be the largest sport fish I've ever seen in my life. We're on board the 112 foot Tempo Real today. She's a uh, Dutch built Hawkfort. Very high quality, 112 footer with the 26 foot 11 beam. So she's got massive amount of deck space as you can see here. Looking forward to showing you through. Now we got some great running footage of the boat this morning, looking at all those individual deck spaces. The weather wasn't too crazy today, but it was four to five feet. The winds were gusting in the lower to mid 20s. So she definitely had to prove her seaworthiness a little bit, but we got some really great shots of all of these deck spaces that seem so much bigger when you're out there on the water. But what stood out the most to me when the boat was running, I'm looking at this thing and I can't believe how quiet it is. And that's because this boat has jet drives. Being a Dutch built boat, they're built with the finest craftsmen in the world. The joinery on this boat is second to nobody. It's a very solid boat. Uh, she runs quiet as a mouse. It's a very impressive boat. We're looking forward to showing you through today. I think you'll be quite impressed. Everything about this boat's design screams sport fish. Obviously, the fishing cockpit, there's even a flying bridge, but there are also a few other deck spaces that wouldn't jump out as sport fish oriented. The foredeck is an entertainer's palace on this boat, uh, huge sunbeds and a beautiful jacuzzi. We're gonna get things kicked off there, then we're gonna make our way back here to the stern. Scott's gonna show us the mechanical space on board and then we'll take you through the interior. The reason we wanted to first show you the bow is to drive home that this is not your typical sport fish. This is an entertaining platform designed with guest use in mind. It's here that we first get a feel for the footprint the exterior deck spaces provide. When it comes to where everyone spends their time up here, look no further than the area immediately forward of the aggressive blacked out brow. This is where we find a beamy sun pad that has enough space for six or so to lay out. This series of sun pads ties in directly with an elevated jacuzzi, which is accessed by four stairs and handholds, as well as courtesy lighting. In terms of standing room up here, you can easily host over 20 guests in this one area alone. On those days when guests are aboard, you come to appreciate the safety rail that encircles the entire bow as well as the side decks. As these make their way forward, the port and starboard handrails unite where we find the ground tackle. This is home to an oversized windlass that raises and lowers the anchor, which has been integrated just below the bow pulpit, which reaches forward. Having deep roots in the most competitive region for mega yacht production in the world, the namesake's shipyard has royal status as the Dutch Hawkfurt shipyard has been in operation for over a hundred years. This Royal Dutch Hawkford shipyard is known for producing some of the world's finest yachts and Tempo Real is a perfect example. Built to navigate in style and withstand anything that comes in her way, this aluminum yacht exceeds the expectations of what one may be hoping to find. She was designed primarily for extending the entertainment capacity with a focus on speed, luxury, and a shallow draft. This becomes more clear as we turn our attention to the stern. There are few deck spaces that are appointed as well as the cockpit onboard Tempo Real. The sheer size of this area is enough to turn heads, but when you factor in how flexible this deck space is, you get an appreciation for what it can do for you. First, taking a look at the fishing qualities found back here, there are twin Murray Brothers fighting chairs, port and starboard. These can swing around to face in any direction, but when they're turned aft, facing the wake, is when you get a sense of how domineering this yacht is. With the spray misting all around you and a clear line of sight off into the aft horizon, these battle-tested fighting chairs prove to be all the inspiration you need to make the most of the day. Other features found back here are padded gunnels surrounding the cockpit and then fold down steps, port and starboard, that make boarding easy. These tie in well with the durable teak cover boards that encircle the cockpit. 
Between the chairs and along the transom is a wide hydraulic swim platform that extends down into the water creating steps, providing easy access for swimming, diving, and pulling prize fish on board. When you're not fishing in this area, you're left with an outstanding footprint where you can serve a group of 20 to 30 for a memorable toast, or the area can serve as a waterline dance floor. <laughs> Dude, you could set up a six-string quartet out here. Are you Absolutely, kidding? yeah. Raise up the Fixed Mario seating band. in the cockpit, as seen forward, are a pair of settees and cocktail tables that are ideal for staying connected with the fishing experience, but also come in handy when you're doing formal entertaining. Rounding out the cockpit here, there's one more thing that I want to show you before we take a look at the mezzanine, and that is the entrance into the engine room. It's found here below this set of stairs and behind this cabinet door is a switch that raises this up electrically. Normally on a boat with a big beam, we're talking about the real estate that it buys you and the cabins. Now we're gonna talk about it in a little bit uh, different context. Here in the engine room, this takes up the near 27 foot beam of the boat. So you have these massive MTU engines in here. She's uh, got some monster engines. Uh, they're the MTU 16V 4000, 3,750 horsepower each. The engine room's also outfitted with 245 kW Northern Lights generators along with some ZF gear boxes. I want to take a minute here and point out that these engines were completely rebuilt in 2020 and have only added a low 800 hours since the rebuild that cost over three quarters of a million dollars. At around the same time, the transmissions were also rebuilt and serviced. These important services were preceded by a rather in-depth refit that took place in 2016. It was during this yard period that Tempo Real received a full new DuPont paint job at Lauderdale Marine Center with a fresh coat of bottom paint being added this year. Also redone are all of the exterior cushions and covers as well as the Eisenglass polycarbonate panels wrapping around the flybridge. One of the hallmarks that we've talked about on a boat like this is the size of the engine room, but there's an area forward of the engine room that really doubles down on the super yacht component of this boat. So Ryan, inside this air conditioned control room, we have all our gauges, controls, and monitors for all of the machinery. And also here we have manuals and literature on all the equipment on board and really a, a nice space for any engineer that'll appreciate the air conditioning under wet. Now that we've shown you the mechanical and the technical spaces, we are going to jump back outside and continue today's walkthrough on the raised portion of the cockpit on the mezzanine. This elevated seating area offers you the best vantage point for staying involved on what's going on in the cockpit, but ensures that you most likely won't be getting splashed as fish are being hauled on board. This deck space is accessed by a wide centerline staircase that has safety rails surrounding the deck where it matters most. When you're standing up here in this area, you feel the cool shade that a molded brow provides as it extends aft. Now that we've covered the primary exterior features of the lower decks, let's change gears as we jump inside and take a look at the interior, starting with the salon. There are a hundred ways that you could lay out a space this big, and one of the reasons why every corner of the salon is so appealing for entertaining is how well lit and open the room is. In here, we see the other side of exquisite Dutch quality, warm woodwork that's stout and built to stand the test of time. Starting in the aft end of the salon, this is where we have the most comfortable seating area on board. This is made up of a U-shaped settee that wraps around three sides of a glass coffee table. This seating is placed adjacent to a cabinet where the salon's TV hides away. There are two other important features in this area that include not only a day head located to starboard next to the salon entry doors, but also we see a set of stairs that leads up to the bridge, an area that we'll return to. I like the modular style in here, like all of the cabinets, they kind of have their own sections and they work together as a larger piece. It also kind of emphasizes the craftsmanship and it kind of puts every little cabinet or drawer space, it's almost like its own piece of artwork. 
It's here in the forward half of the salon with all this storage that we find two final features that help define the area. The first is a round tabletop and four chairs arranged on the starboard side that are just a few feet away from a full service wet bar. This capable wet bar is found in the port forward corner of the salon and features a wrapping design as well as a ton of storage. Behind this bar, we find not only stone countertops with a sink inset, but there's also refrigeration below. I'd also like to point out a centerline staircase that we'll return to in a few minutes. This leads down to the lower level. For now, follow us into the first guest stateroom on board, accessed on the starboard side of the boat. We enter this accommodation between a pair of floor-to-ceiling storage cabinets and wardrobes. These bring us into a beamy cabin, which features an aft-facing king-sized berth. Found at the foot of this bed is not only cabinetry, but also a 42-inch TV that ties into the yacht's entertainment system. Looking to starboard, we see a bench seat beside a large window in the superstructure. Turning our attention to the port side now, we have a similarly sized area with additional storage and a desk that doubles as a vanity. Just a few feet away from this, in the port aft corner, is the entrance into a stone finished ensuite. Leaving here and walking back through the salon, let's head down to the next guest accommodation, located on the lower deck. The theme of dark woodwork and luxury finishes continues here throughout the lower accommodations. Located on the starboard side of the yacht, this stateroom boasts an aft-facing queen berth. At the foot of the bed is not only this cabin's TV, but also a seating area bathed in light that comes in through whole side windows. Found just a few feet away from the windows, seating area, and TV, we have the entrance into the ensuite head and shower. Yeah, Ryan, so leaving this stateroom down here on the lower level gives us access to the galley through this hidden pocket door. Entering the galley gives you a look at how serious this yacht is about entertaining. Four whole side windows pour light down into an abundance of countertop space that's been outfitted with cleanup and organization in mind. Part of these stainless countertops are a pair of sinks that are located outboard. A few other crucial appliances found in the immediate area are two dishwashers and an industrial ice maker. Directly above these, we see the microwave. For the main appliances, we look forward in the galley, where we see a six burner Miele cooktop above a pair of ovens. Another thing that sets this boat apart, especially being a sport fish, is her galley. She's enormous. Um, another great feature that uh, accommodates for large parties, great storage, uh, freezers and refrigerators, easy access. Plenty of bigger boat features on what is already a big enough boat. Wrapping up in the galley, we're next going to continue forward and take a look at where the crew stays. Off of a central shared living space are three private double crew staterooms for up to six crew. The size and footprint of this area is what you'd expect to see on a much bigger superyacht. This common area features a U-shaped dinette on the port side where meals are shared. Looking directly above this, we see a custom ladder that leads up through an egress hatch onto the main deck. The crew share three cabins, each of which sleeps two guests. The main difference between these is that the aft cabin has a private ensuite head and shower while the mirrored cabins forward share a head and shower. Leaving here, let's pass back through the galley and into the salon as we make our way up to the bridge and the sky lounge. Another primary access point to the bridge is found through a pair of sliding glass doors on the aft deck. Upon entering, you first find yourself in the living end of the sky lounge, which offers you one of the more private experiences on this yacht. U-shaped seating wraps around the port side below a long series of windows that let in exterior light. An important aspect of this seating area is the fully adjustable dining table that allows this space to serve as your formal indoor dining location. 
You'll note that cabinetry and storage are found adjacent near the staircase that help make the most of this space. The forward portion of this deck is reserved for all of the instruments that make up this Hawkford's main helm. This is where we get back to the distinctly sport fish design that dictates this yacht's capabilities. It's from a centerline helm seat that the captain takes control over this boat. The captain's chair is flanked port and starboard by a pair of bench seats where the crew and guests can join the first in command. All of the controls themselves are arranged along a broad dash with everything found below five monitors. Located here is everything that you need to operate her man engines and jet propulsion system. If you leave the main helm and head aft, you have direct access out onto the bridge deck aft. This space is one that you simply would not have on any smaller yacht with this design. The bridge deck aft provides you an upper deck lounging and dining area ideal for alfresco meals in the ocean air. Along the aft is a heavy duty aluminum rail that encircles the deck. This serves a few purposes. The first is obviously safety. The second is the view that it provides. And the third purpose it serves is that it's the mounting point for the boat's two life rafts. The forward section of the bridge deck aft is protected partially by a molded brow that extends towards the dinette. The last things that I want to point out about this deck is that there are full walkarounds that run along both sides of the wheelhouse, converging at the yacht's Portuguese bridge. When it's dark out and you're making long passes, this is the perfect spot from which to survey the surrounding water and the bow as this Hawkford tears across the surface of the water. Wrapping up on the bridge deck, our final stop on today's walkthrough is the flying bridge, which makes quite the statement. Complete with a hardtop and an expansive lounging area, this is really the place to be whenever you want to enjoy the ride and the view. The aft portion of this flybridge is wide open and makes for a great spot to set out a few lounge chairs, while the built-in seating is found just forward throughout the rest of the space. Before we dive into the seating, I first want to point out the outriggers that flank both sides of the yacht, which were clear-coated this year. A convertible dining area is seen over on the port side at this expandable tabletop. Directly across from this, we see a molded-in storage cabinet that also gives you a place to keep a refrigerator and some cold drinks. Looking forward and beneath the hardtop is where we have the main observation seating area on board. This is made up of port and starboard bench seating that faces forward from this elevated position. A standout feature up here is the upper helm, which was designed to electrically hide away the controls when they aren't being used. I don't think I'm reaching to say that this is one of the more iconic boats to have graced the waterways of the southeastern seaboard. Clearly, she's recognizable from a glance which was the case when Scott first saw her early on in his yachting career. Many years ago, I was a deckhand on a boat, first boat I ever worked on, and I remember seeing this boat tied up in Fort Lauderdale, and I just remember going, wow, what, what is that? Like, you know, usually you see a sport fish, and it's like, you know, 60, 70, 80, even a 90-footer. But this thing just uh, shadowed everything else I'd ever seen. I was really impressed. There I was, you know, a week later, and this legendary captain I was working for at the time pointed out the boat to me. Hey, Scott, do you see that boat over there? And I said, yeah, I kind of noticed it the other day. And he, he told me then, it's, you know, that's one of the finest sport fishes ever built. You know, her lines are just timeless. They're, they're beautiful and they're strong. And she's quite an icon. I think anybody that's been around a little while knows the boat. If the best makes you happy, uh, this will not disappoint. On behalf of Dennis and Yachting, Scott LaCroix and myself, Thanks for joining us on today's walkthrough on board this 112-foot Hawkford luxury sportfish. If you'd like to see her in person, whether at the 2021 Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show or in her slip after the show, feel free to reach out to Scott or his co-broker Bruce Schattenberg and they can set that up for you.